Okay, this is Gilmore Girls. My fiance is a total fan. She wanted to watch the Netflix reboot over Thanksgiving, and being her hubby to be, I figured I'd give it the benefit of the doubt. If you're watching this, you might be a guy in the same boat as me, and you need a primer on your significant other's favorite show. Strap yourselves in. I'm going to give you the rundown. This is Coolsville, the town the story takes place in. It's in Minnesota, as you can see. These are the two main characters, Lorelai. I know that name because I read the episode description. This is her sister, Gilly, Gilly, Gilly Gilmore, who I understand is a struggling writer from New York, which is completely original and not in any way cliche. You look perfect. Admit it, you've been gooped. I have not been gooped. You're doing yoga in the aisles, wearing cashmere sweatpants while your comfort dog watches Zoolander 2 on his watch. I do blood clot prevention foot pumps, wearing my Yonashimo Kanishiri baseball cap while toothpaste dries up a zit on my chin. This is how people talk on this show. I'm told that it's very funny. It's a staple of the program. Snappy back and forth dialogue full of pop culture references. Like me, you'll probably notice these are supposed to be jokes. I hear them, I know I'm supposed to laugh, but it's less like, <laughs> and more like, <laughs> and then only like half the time. But that's okay, it's probably just that it's not my demographic. Except I know that this reference, and then I find one, and it's like the Eastern Promises steam room scene, only the stuff on the walls ain't blood. Yeah, my fiance isn't gonna catch that one. And I know for a fact that the only people who will catch it probably aren't watching this show. You'll notice a lot of peculiarities with the dialogue in this series. They often talk about things that don't matter. The shot club closed due to rats. Again? We got parking meters. Where? Well, no one would pay, so they took them out. This town is mob ruled. Al's Pancake World won Best Christmas Decorations again. <laughs> well, it's that nativity scene with the eggplant Jesus. You just can't beat it. There's a debate going on whether or not to take the phone booth out. Oh, where would Superman change when he comes to save our town from Ben Affleck? I made the same excellent point. What's with the signs? Ooh, I saved the best for last. Taylor has decided that septic systems are beneath us and he wants to go full on sewer. There was really no point to any of that, so if you happen to miss it while bringing the popcorn in for your fiance, don't worry, none of it added any kind of substance to the story. Also, there's a solid minute of the main character trying to get reception on her cell phone. No character development, no exposition, just literally 60 seconds of her saying, Hello? 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 Really compelling to watch. Very brave choice. Most shows would actually fill that time with something substantive. This is Kirk. He's the comic relief. You can tell that because he says the same joke seven times in one scene. Started a new business. It's a rideshare business. I call it Uber. Oh, there's already an Uber, Kirk. No, not Uber. Uber. Three O's instead of a U. Oh. Uber. Uber. Like Uber. Except it's Uber. It's pronounced Uber. You'll find that they do that a lot on this show. Repeat the same gag over and over again. You know, so just in case you laughed at it the first time, they can make sure it becomes stale and annoying before you reach the end of the scene. What's the Wi-Fi password here? Diner Luke, capital D, small L. Oh, excuse me, password. Diner Danes, 321, all cap. Excuse me, your password? Waffle House Butter Bob. Cute. Isn't it, though? I don't think the Wi-Fi is working. Capital B on butter. Yeah, I'm still here, Michelle. For all the mildly amusing, subtle pop culture references, don't worry about things going over your head. Don't be concerned about missing any of the jokes. This show very helpfully lets you know when you're supposed to laugh. Right now, thanks to my new business, Widow Puddleston is only 10 minutes late for chemo. Uh, let's see, who else we got? This is Luke. He's the only character who acts like an adult on this show. Your fiancé will likely remark that he reminds her of you. This is because he talks like an actual person, and not a proxy for the show's pop culture-obsessed writing staff. You'll notice they made sure to give him a backwards baseball cap so he looks like a total doofus and not somebody that you might actually pay serious attention to. This is Paul, Gilly's boyfriend. Paul is here. Why is Paul here? I invited him for dinner, and I totally forgot. The running gag in this episode is that he's a really forgettable guy and she doesn't really like him, so she wants to break up with him. The problem is, he's so forgettable, she keeps forgetting to do so. 
Isn't that funny, you guys? The great thing about that subplot is that it makes the main character totally unlikable, because either she's a complete airhead who isn't able to get herself out of an unfulfilling relationship because she just, like, can't remember to? I forgot about Paul. You're kidding. No. Or she's a cruel and manipulative jerk who's stringing a nice guy along just because she's not mature enough to take a few minutes and have an honest conversation with him about their relationship. I mean, Paul is basically the patsy of the whole ordeal. He's a nice guy. He remembers the hobbies and passions of everybody he's met. He's doing his best to be friendly with his girlfriend's family. He takes time to make them all feel special and appreciated, and everybody pays him back by treating him like a loser and insulting him behind his back. I'm supposed to root for these nasty people? You'll notice I haven't really told you the plot of the series, and that's only because I never really caught it. I think Lorelai runs a fancy bed and breakfast or something. I don't know. She doesn't seem particularly interested in it. Actually, she doesn't seem particularly interested in anything besides herself, for that matter. Where is it? What? The coffee maker. Where is the coffee maker? Uh, it was right here, yesterday. It was I, right here. I, Roy? What? Um, Roy? Where's the coffee machine? Oh yeah, I moved it. I need a counter space. Eduardo can make you a coffee. How is Eduardo magic? He makes a stovetop version that... Uh, it really is... Uh, I can move it back. I am so sorry, but I don't think this is gonna work. Michelle! I'm right here. Oh, sorry, uh, Michelle, call over to Momo's and see if they can accommodate a crazy cool kanji extravaganza. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. Did you catch that, guys? One of her cooks moved a coffee maker from one spot in the kitchen to another spot in the kitchen, and she just can't handle it. Oh, her life is so hard. Why does everything bad happen to her? She can't even. Lorelai's mom or grandma or whatever is a really wealthy widow in a big fancy mansion and she's trying to figure out what to do now that her husband has died and left her with all that cash. Her life is also hard. It's so tough finding good help for that mansion she's living in. There's a flashback where we find out that Lorelai tells a severely inappropriate story at her father's funeral when she's asked to share a happy memory. This causes tension with her mom. Apparently Lorelai and her dad had a very rocky history, and so she has a complete mental breakdown at his funeral. Or something, I don't know. Look, as far as I can tell, Gilmore Girls is a show where rich adults complain about the non-existent drama happening in their lives. Gilmore Girls is basically First World Problems, the TV series. Every dilemma the characters face in this episode can be solved by, I don't know, call me crazy, each of them taking five minutes to act their age. I can't tell if we're supposed to be rooting for the two main characters or screaming at them the whole time for their complete inability to place their lives and the lives of others in a broader context. Gilly, or whatever her name is, I'm not sure, has absolutely no personality. Lorelai has the most unlikable one of any TV protagonist in history. You'll notice this woman is in her late 40s, and yet she has the maturity of a late generation millennial. I'd give you the play-by-play -play of the episode, but everything drags. There's a subplot in which Lorelai forces Larry, or whatever his name is, to have a baby via surrogate. He's dead set against the idea, but since she doesn't care about anyone's feelings but her own, it's the main source of contention between the two. There's a subplot involving some article Gilly wrote, I'm not not sure what about, and there's this weird one-off where a group of retired old Navy models play some royalty-free stock music in their living room for some... I don't even know, they never really explained it. This show's like Seinfeld in that it's a show about nothing, but instead of featuring a cast of characters that make me laugh, it features a cast of characters that make me want to officiate my own Viking funeral. Sorry guys, I wish I could tell you some more, maybe give you some great insight to prepare you for watching it next to your significant other, but I've got nothing. My fiancé thought I was getting bored watching it, but I really wasn't. I was just frustrated. It's an hour and a half of people complaining about nothing, and nothing happening. I have no idea if things get better further into the series because we just stuck with the first episode. I guess the show has like a cult following due to the quirky nature of every episode revolving around nothing in particular. There are no real story beats and every conversation the characters have is completely pointless in the long run. Nevertheless, you know what? People like it. Who am I to criticize? The show's clearly been successful. It's made a bunch of money, so kudos. I honestly don't get it. But enjoy the new series, fans. You guys keep doing you. You know what? 24 is coming back next year. Twin Peaks, too. So my lady's got her TV revival and I've got mine. Maybe they'll decide to bring back In the Heat of the Night and my mom will be happy, too. 
Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that video, give it a like. If you want to help this channel to grow, share my videos with other people. And if you like this content and you want to see more, subscribe to my channel. Or don't. I don't really care.